Hello there and thank you for joining me for episode number five of Gowing Life's Longevity Weekly with me, Chris Kerwin. Again, I'm just going to give you a quick review of just some of the amazing work that our researchers have been looking at over the past couple of days. We've got three fascinating topics this week, all from the world of health, wellness and longevity. So without further ado, please enjoy. First topic this week, we're going to be looking at the effects of drinking on your long term health. We all know that excessive drinking or binge drinking can have some really serious adverse health consequences. Liver and heart function, just for example, are seriously affected by excessive drinking. But what about the people that just have, say, one glass of wine or one beer each night? What are the long term health impacts of this? These are the moderate to light drinkers. And kind of surprisingly, we don't actually know a huge amount about the long term effects on the lifespan of this sort of habit. Now, in a bid to shed some light on this, researchers examined cardiovascular mortality and survival rates of over 1,300 men, specifically looking at the relationship between life expectancy and the light consumption of different types of alcoholic drinks. For this study, the scientists defined long-term light alcohol intake as less than 20 grams of alcohol per day. For context, this is roughly two and a half units of alcohol the equivalent to roughly one pint of 4.5% lager or a medium glass of 13.5% wine. The study found that this daily intake of alcohol actually seemed to reduce cardiovascular mortality and improve life expectancy compared to those who didn't drink any alcohol at all. Now, Drinking less than half a glass of wine a day appeared to be more beneficial than any other alcoholic drinks and was associated with five years increased life expectancy at age 50 compared to those of the non-drinkers. It's also quite important to note that 70% of all wine consumed was red wine. The researchers state that these effects could not be explained by confounding factors. These are differences in test and control subjects, BMI, smoking habits, pre previous drinking habits or socio-economic differences. This means that it is more than likely that these effects that we saw on the impact of health were down to alcohol intake. Now, although these findings are very interesting, this study did have a couple of weaknesses. For instance, the frequency of the drinking was not recorded and some of the test su subjects did not unwaveringly stick to their drink of choice. This means that some of the people who are drinking beer may have had a glass of wine or something each week. Now, Personally, in my opinion, I think more studies are needed to verify these results. In our second topic this week, we're looking at a study that was carried out in Finland, aiming to answer the question, are elderly people today fitter than elderly people of the past? The researchers studied and compared mental and physical fitness between two groups of 75 to 80 year olds born 28 years apart. The first group were born between 1910 and 1914. The second group were born between 1938 and 1943. When tested at the same age, the later cohort showed improvements in walking speed, grip strength, knee strength and extension, and also some improvements in respiratory health and cognitive function. Now this indeed shows that elderly people today are fitter and therefore biologically younger than elderly people of the past. And this sort of makes sense with improvements to better economic facilities, better nutrition, better education, and all round better quality of life. Now, this is a great study where it shows that 80 might just be the new 60. But we need to keep in mind Finland is quite a unique place in many regards. For example, it's such high quality of life, of nutrition, of education, of income, and of social support, which is offered to all of its 5 million population. These results from this study might not be applicable to regions that are poorer or areas of more social inequality. For our third and final topic this week, we reviewed a study that investigated the impact of sleep on all-cause mortality. As you can see in this graph, cardiovascular disease and strokes are currently a couple of the most leading causes of death in the United States. In recent years, sleep has been more frequently recognised as a crucial contributor to all manner of health conditions. But we still lack a comprehensive understanding of the relationship between short sleep duration and adverse health outcomes. 
To investigate this, researchers gathered all-cause mortality data on over 1,600 adults. These individuals were instructed to sleep one night in lab conditions where scientists could monitor their sleep duration. Results showed that those with cardiovascular disease or who had suffered a stroke, who slept under six hours a night, were more likely to die than those individuals with the same conditions but who slept longer than six hours a night. Now, these results are really interesting, but I do think a big weakness with the study was that the individuals only had one night's sleep that was monitored. I think the conclusions would be much more robust if, in fact, they had multiple nights sleep measured. Despite this, I agree that sleep has a profound effect on health, and it is something that we should all be a little bit more wary about. And that is it for this week's Longevity Weekly, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to find out more, please go to the Gowing Life website, www.gowinglife.com. We've got some really interesting articles up there from this week. One about gene editing helping boost fat burning cells, how calorie restriction unclogs your arteries, and new electronic artificial blood vessel. So if you'd like to find out any more about them, please go to the website. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great week. Thank you.